So let's talk about why Steve Bannon, now that he's been referred for criminal prosecution, will not be able to run out the clock the way Don McGahn did. And that's a good thing, because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So I want to knock out a quick video based on lots of questions and concerns that I've been hearing from you all. Um, great questions like, well, can't Steve Bannon, now that he's being referred for criminal prosecution, just run out the clock, weaponize the delay in the court system the way Don McGahn did, the way Donald Trump always does? And the good news is, he really can't. Here's why. Let's look at Don McGahn. Don McGahn was involved in an endless subpoena battle, civil litigation, as to whether he could be forced to appear before Congress to testify. And Don McGahn successfully weaponized the delay built into the civil litigation system. You don't like some ruling from the court? Just appeal it to the appellate court. You don't like that ruling? Appeal it to the Supreme Court. And then when the Supreme Court rules against you and you go all the way back down to the trial court, you raise some new frivolous claims. And it's an endless process of delay, particularly for a crooked litigant, right? Um, so that's what happens in the setting of civil litigation. Don McGahn ran out the clock for more than two years and a court never did order him to testify. He ended up negotiating with Congress some really sweetheart terms. Well, okay, I'll testify, but I'll only testify behind closed doors and I'll only talk about what's already been publicly reported in the Mueller report. You can't ask me anything else. So that sort of endless civil litigation process is not effective for Congress promptly investigating, I don't know, an attack on our democracy. Here's how that differs from what's about to happen to Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon is going to be held in contempt, I think on Tuesday is when the vote will be taken, and then he will be referred to the Department of Justice for criminal prosecution for being in contempt of Congress. The law, the federal law, and you know I never go far without the big, ugly, blue book of federal laws, the U.S. Code, um, here's how the federal law reads with respect to what will happen now. And it, it can be found at 2 United States Code Section 194, and it reads in pertinent part that once Congress refers Steve Bannon for prosecution for contempt of Congress, quote, to the appropriate U.S. attorney, whose duty it shall be to bring the matter before the grand jury for its action, close quote. That's the law, the federal law. The U.S. attorney, it's his or her duty to bring this matter before the grand jury for its action. I predict that action will be a prompt criminal indictment of Steve Bannon. Then that case moves into federal court. And guess what? Unlike civil litigation, unlike Don McGahn, unlike Donald Trump's endless civil litigation over whether he should be made to turn over his tax returns and financial records, we've, we've heard that tune before, right? Unlike all of that, once you are a criminal defendant in court, guess what? You don't control the delay in the system. In fact, the law, the Speedy Trial Act in federal court says from the day of indictment to the day of trial, 70 days. That's actually the prosecution's deadline. Now, that doesn't happen a lot. The parties agree to extend that time. But, but the point is, Steve Bannon doesn't control the process or the scheduling. And Steve Bannon cannot inject all sorts of delay into his criminal prosecution for nefarious reasons. As importantly, if a judge makes a legal ruling, Steve Bannon can't appeal it endlessly up and down the appellate court chain. Delaying matters the way uh, civil litigants in civil lawsuits can. So I predict Steve Bannon's criminal prosecution will move through the court system 
pretty quickly, pretty expeditiously, unlike all the civil litigation that lingers forever and that nefarious litigants can use to run out the clock to their advantage. Here's a couple of other things to keep in mind about the coming criminal prosecution for Steve Bannon. If he's convicted of contempt of Congress, and he should be because he committed the offense of contempt of Congress, the law provides that he shall be imprisoned for no less than one month, 30 days. So he's, the judge has to put him in jail for 30 days and no more than a year. That is the available sentence, the available punishment in the event Bannon is convicted of contempt of Congress. But when you bring a prosecution for contempt of Congress, it's not just to, to do everything you can to put that person in jail or in prison. That's part of the goal because people should, I don't know, be held accountable for their crimes. But there are other goals. One, it could be if he's indicted, he could give up the ghost and he, sh he could negotiate a plea that involved perhaps probation if he testifies truthfully before Congress. So Congress will get the testimony it is seeking. The other important goal is to send a message to others like Cash Patel and Dan Scavino and Mark Meadows and others who have been subpoenaed by Congress that you want to sit your butt in jail for a year like Steve Bannon? Go ahead and defy our subpoenas. Go ahead and be in contempt of Congress. This is what will happen to you. And you know, Bannon might want to sit in jail for a month or six months or a year for public relations purposes. Maybe he thinks that's good to curry favor with Donald Trump's base for some reason, like maybe to steal more money from them the way he did with his bogus We Build the Wall Foundation, for which he was pardoned by Donald Trump. You can't make this stuff up, friends. But I doubt others will want to spend time in jail or in prison by defying congressional subpoenas after those others see that Congress is actually serious this time. So hopefully that answers and unpacks and un unravels some of the questions and concerns that I've been seeing you all pose in your questions across various social media platforms. As always, friends, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.